The SMB's cap of 120 on the Swiss franc has come under intense scrutiny since its implementation in September 2011. Joining me on the phone now is Panagiotis Belopoulos, Head of Research at Bank Vontabel in Zurich, Switzerland, to discuss what impact the cap is having on the Swiss economy. But before we get to that, Panagiotis, data released today has shown that Switzerland's current account surplus declined by nearly a quarter in 2011 due to lower income from direct investments abroad. But despite this, the ZEW survey for economic sentiment hit a three-month high today, suggesting positive economic development in Switzerland on a six-month time horizon. Which areas are currently looking favorable and which are at risk? Yeah, um, I was a bit surprised to see that because what we have seen over the last, let's say, two, three months was uh, a range of conflicting data. So if you take, for example, the PMI, which is clearly negative and fell below the 50 uh, threshold level. On the other hand, we had consumer confidence uh, deeply in the negative territory in July. On the other hand, we had, uh, as you mentioned, uh, ZDV, but also the UPS uh, consumer indicator and the COF outlook, which were pointing uh, to a more positive picture. So I think we need to see a couple of more uh, data points over the coming months, um, what is going to happen to Switzerland. So I was positively surprised. One of the main drivers in general for still positive economic confidence is, uh, uh, let's say, from consumer goods companies, which still see a pretty healthy uh, demand. Um, also, the consumer itself, if you look at the uh, unemployment rate, uh, remains at, uh, at the lows, 2.7% or 29 uh, adjusted. So I think these are the, the main drivers. However, if you look at uh, what is happening around Switzerland uh, with Q2 GDP for all major economies uh, either contracting or um, slowing down, uh, then I'm, um, yeah, I'm not so confident about, let's say, the, uh, the macro outlook for the next couple of months. So it's going to be mainly uh, the, the consumer uh, who's decide in what direction the Swiss economy will go. The SMB has been criticised by investors for not allowing the markets to govern themselves. It's thought that the central bank is now turning its focus to smaller lenders in an effort to curb the property boom. There's also been some speculation that the bank sold off some of its euros this week, causing all euro crosses to become lower. Are investors' frustrations understandable? Um, to a certain extent, yes. But, um, you know, as an investor, you always have your your own pretty narrow view while if you look at the mandate of the SMB um, it's not you know uh, protecting a, a certain you know uh, industry sector or you know any uh, with, as I said you have a very clear mandate so uh, considering this you know you have to look what is best for uh, the country as a whole and if you look at uh, deflation trends, so uh, basically uh, the CPI has been trending down, even into negative territory. If you look at the uh, order trends uh, of traditional Swiss exporters, then you know the peg is definitely justified. So that's that's number one. Uh, on the other hand, you know, with uh, with regards to what is happening more on the on the balance sheet, which is uh, under close scrutiny from a lot of investors. You know, this is, uh, you know, a lot of those thoughts are driven by looking at the Swiss National Bank as a kind of traditional bank, um, which is definitely wrong. I mean, there is no mandate for profit generation or anything. And so, uh, if you ask me also about the implications for the property or real estate market, I mean, yes. But this is probably having very low interest rates for, for the foreseeable future is the, the lesser uh, of two evils, to put it that way. A senior government official has also said this week that the SMB cap could be maintained for years should the euro debt crisis continue. Given that the SMB has accumulated massive reserves of foreign exchange, reaching the equivalent of $400 billion in order to maintain the cap, how feasible is this as an option and how long do you think the cap will be maintained for? That's a good question and uh, if you knew the answer you could make a lot of money but basically there are two two uh, key data indicators you should watch. Number one is 
um, what is happening on the inflation front and and um, as, we said, as we discussed before there is no inflation it's actually on the contrary we have deflation so there is not much of a risk that um, you know we're going to create massive inflation by uh, flooding the markets with with Swiss francs so no risk on that front for at least the next 12 to 18 months and probably that's in terms of time horizon, the longest you're looking at. Uh, and the second one is what is uh, what you know can be done in terms of size. So if you look at uh, the FX reserves as a percentage of Swiss GDP, which is around 70% now, uh, we have small countries like Taiwan or or Hong Kong, which is a good example, which basically have FX reserves as a percentage of GDP of uh, 120% or more. So there is um, there is a lot of room uh, left, um, you know, if you just take uh, these these benchmarks. And the third one uh, I want to mention, with the trends we see now in terms of uh, deflation in Switzerland and uh, inflation abroad, basically you have the uh, the purchase price parity, which is anywhere between 130 and you know 135, depending on how you calculate, is coming down anyway. So if we have the same situation persisting for a next for the next 12 to 18 months, you will will just have you know purchase pr- price parity trending down anyway, more towards let's say 125 or so, and then. The, let's say the fundamental pressure um, is much less to uh, to um, yeah for foreigners to uh, to buy the Swiss francs. So, but m- my answer is yeah, I see no obstacle, maybe except for political pressure, which may flare up from time to time, and uh, that the SMB will maintain this peg uh, for at least the next twelve months. That's all we've got time for right now, but thank you for those comments. The Duke of Scobie TV team will be back shortly with more exclusive interviews. Goodbye for now.